And uh, one of the stories that we've been covering as well as Fukushima is the BP Gulf oil spill. Um, now, uh, we've, uh, I was talking earlier about getting some of the activists that have been involved with that and, uh, you know, professionals and all the other people. And we, we have people like Tricia Springstead who, who um, are going to, uh, eventually we're going to get an interview with. And she, she's going around. Uh, she's actually just sold her house and bought a vehicle. And she's going around doing, she's a nurse, uh, help, checking people for health effects such as skin disease and, uh, and all the way to cancers. Um, and she's noting them down. And these are epidemic, um, it's, it, you know, the, the data from that can be used to, create an epidemiological study uh, and these aren't being done by the uh, various uh, uh, American health effects and that's mainly because BP uh, who employed WPP, Ogilvy and Maha and uh, uh, G4S, the security company, uh, to attack activists and we, we saw the same thing in uh, Ireland uh, in Mayo, uh, they were using the same techniques against the local population there. So, uh, but this is this is uh, the American version of this, not the Irish version. Um, and uh, we also have covered the Japanese version, which is slightly different, but the same people are involved, Ogilvy and Maha, uh, and obviously uh, similar corporate interests. So, um, but there is one other person who I'm basically um, uh, going to be talking uh, to, I think, uh, in about 10 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to just sort of try and do some the intro basically into uh, what she's uh, doing. Um, so uh, basically I've got uh, Maureen Dofni, Do uh, uh, and uh, she is basically um, uh, no, Dauphiny, I should say. I, uh, the, my, my French is uh, very poor. Uh, but uh, Maureen Dauphiny, who's uh, an American activist who's been running blogs uh, after the, the BP Gulf War spill all the way through, uh, she had a number of issues. Uh, I mean, Facebook took down her Facebook page and so on and so on. And we had, uh, you know, obviously Ogilvy and Maha, Burston and Muller, you know, both uh, owned by WPP, LLC. Uh, you can Google that if you want to have a bit of fun. Uh, do uh, the word corporate watch as well, and you'll uh, come across a nest of vipers. Um, <laughs> but the bottom line is uh, <laughs> she's basically been fighting against them. They've thrown their weight at her. In many different ways, we're going to get her on. We're going to let have her talk, and she's uh, got a blog uh, basically, which is called uh, the Real Coastal Warriors uh, on Facebook. Real Coastal Warriors, um, and these are basically they they, they have many people. Uh, we, we were supposed to get a, a diver who's basically been uh, covering the BP Gulf oil spill. Um, he was actually made. Uh, his name's Scott Porter. He was made to actually dive in the, uh, uh, the contaminated water and it was two weeks uh, after the NDAA who asked him to dive in the water uh, had received a letter saying that no divers should be in the water. Needless to say he got very ill um, and uh, over, the, uh, over this problem. Um, so he had some, uh, I think I believe, neurological uh, illness, skin diseases, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, so basically we're going to get him in to discuss his findings. Uh, he was diving recently and he hit another plume and his, his skin came up in uh, rashes, uh, meaning that in the Gulf uh, area there are still emissions coming. Uh, the same guy, by the way, he, he does these videos, underwater videos, showing the plumes. Uh, and RT, I think it was in 2010 or 11, you know, took his uh, video uh, used it on their RT news program and basically, uh, you know, they didn't give him any accreditation whatsoever. Um, so, uh, you know, we're basically going to get him in um, and uh, hopefully maybe by next week uh, because he has a very interesting story to tell and I think his testimony is worth uh, recording. Um, so with uh, Maureen Dauphiny today, as I say, she's, uh, she has people like that posting, they're her contacts, uh, they're Trisha uh, Springstead, the nurse, uh, that's her contact. Um, and uh, so basically we, we've got a, a very interesting bunch of people who are using science to uh, prove effects. Um, and of course this is all on the back of the fact that BP's just done a quote settlement unquote, uh, which is, uh, is being regarded as being way under what they, what, what they can work out now. Um, but this is all based on the fact that there's, there's no health effects or environmental effects of no 
in the area. Um, and of course, we're seeing there are. You know, I think a, a whole load of birds left one part of uh, that uh, that area, basically. You know, um, possibly because of some sort of contamination incident. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, we're seeing this still ongoing. And uh, these are the activists that are uh, sitting down there. We say activists, but they're actually basically scientists. They're investigators um, who are basically getting testimony, evidence, and uh, uh, letting us know what's going on. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're, uh, we're going to be basically getting uh, uh, Maureen in very shortly. Uh, we have had uh, uh, Charles Williams Diggin discussing this as well. And he, 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 in that uh, discussion, we were discussing a load of amazing things. And, uh, and we were also tying up uh, that operation. We call it an operation against uh, the locals of an, of an area that's been uh, contaminated. They use the same techniques, uh, the corporations uh, and governments, to uh, quell uh, dissent and to minimize cost. Um, so uh, the bottom line is we'll be having her in. Um, okay, so I think she's ready. I'm going to try and add her in. Uh, I'd, first of all, I'll just give her a little bit of warning. Um, uh, are you ready to come in? <laughs> There we go. This is all live radio, people. Yeah, and that's something that we don't really do a huge amount of, really, is it? Apart from when we're doing our little uh, rants and stuff like that. Well, like, with that bit, there's be live. But a lot of our podcasts do be pre-recorded, so... Um, sure. Yeah, it's always welcome yeah. to have somebody come in live. And, uh, well, she kindly stepped in because uh, Rob was unable to, uh, to make it. So, uh, oh, she says uh, 10 minutes. Right, okay. Ten minutes. I was going to say okay. okay to that. And I suppose we could cover some other stories uh, for ten minutes. Um, so that'll be 31. Okay, great. And um, yeah, now this is going to be a, a good interview. Uh, please, please sit down. She's really so queued up. Um, as I said, if you go to the real Coastal Warriors and you go to the photos, okay, you'll see the, uh, they've got one picture, the silence of the voices. Uh, and underneath there's a statement and you click more and it's a very a very extensive statement um, so if you're out there live now go to the real coastal warriors on facebook um, click on the uh, on the picture there's a, the photo section and look for the silence of the voices fighting bp the battle for truth so with a lady with a mouth a hand over her mouth um, and there's a there's a comment under it uh, it's well worth a uh, read and that will give you a, a lot of the background. Um, and we're going to just be talking about social impacts and various other things with, uh, with Maureen today. Um, and there are other people as well uh, that we've got lined up. Um, so basically, uh, and they're, they're very eager to get the word out because, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, sort of alternative media is not really covering this story. And uh, uh, I, I, I could sort of nearly include democracy now. <laughs> the, the much vaulted, uh, but uh, I think they have covered some of this, but the, but they've been uh, a bit lacking. So maybe if we can uh, get some of the uh, testimonies of these uh, dedicated activists, then uh, you know we'll we'll go there. So um, all right, okay, um, Jimmy, mm. have you got any sort of? Uh, Posts or anything, or anything you want to put to? Oh, right, is there anything you want to put to this actually? Because you've you've been covering this BP Gulf War school now with me uh, for a while. Yeah, well, t to be honest, though, Sean, I was tuned into it from right when it started, like, and um, sure, sure. So with the Florida oil spill uh, website. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so I've been there through the history of it, like, we've been through all the all the pros and cons and is it still leaking is it not still leaking or what's the story and sure. it, it, it it's quite like um one i know we don't have scott on this week but i did read through the article that uh charles williams dig uh did write on it and it was um quite astounding really like um that all the old conspiracy tired stories about it's still leaking it, it it i still think that's quite a possibility at the minute because i think on in the article they were mentioning um the depth of the oil which is like forming in a basin there in around the area of the macondo well and the adjoining sections 
and uh, you've got a huge build up of um carbohydrates i suppose is that what you'd call them and yeah and well, and, 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 compounds and generally and, yeah and, and loads of compounds really because we've got to take into yeah. consideration that there was a huge amount of corexit which was dumped on it and wasn't dumped on one go they, they were they were flying out there on the daily basis uh yeah sort of uh dumping corexit on top of the water and corexit i suppose is what you describe it as a, a chemical which sort of like it, how 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 would you say it works it's on the dispers It's the dispersant, isn't it? It's supposed to be anyway. Dispersant. I, I think dispersant is a very very bad word to use because what it does is it makes it drop to the bottom. It's it's sort of like rubs it of its molecular cohesion in a sense, breaks it apart so that all the bad nasty stuff that could be seen would sink to the bottom. Would that be correct or? Well, I mean, they, basically they were supposed to disperse it all together, but what it did, it actually just sank it to the bottom. But sank I think the, well, the corrects yeah. actually made, uh, you know, changed it chemically as well. They made it much tougher for the more, more thriving bacteria to, because there's various bacteria that attack oil. But the most thriving one that would really eat up all the oil wasn't able to digest what was there. So uh, there is another uh, bacteria that was working at it, but, you know, it's a very slow moving bacteria. Uh, and there's a hell of a lot of mess there. So, um, and of course, every time there's a storm, it comes back in, it drops onto the beaches, it destroys birds' habitats and uh, various other things. Um, and uh, you know, if you touch this stuff, you get sort of, you can get sort of skin uh, problems and yeah. what have. You. So, it's just, uh, it's just astounding, really, Sean. Though that um, this this particular diver found it afterwards, after he went into the water, that he couldn't, that no diver should have been in the water but yet the beaches are probably open for business yeah and the NDAA the NDAA basically said uh, well that's it they were trying to play it all down they were telling guys that were, that was uh, getting sprayed by Corexit don't worry about wearing uh, masks and th things you know and it was uh, you know they were really encouraging people not to uh, do what what in Japan they say is rumor monger uh, so basically they'd get guys uh, you know policemen and what have you to not have the protective equipment um, mm. you know, sort of, of course, we've seen a similar up. incident there too with the Exxon Valdez, wasn't? Wasn't the Exxon Valdez survivors yeah. also? They uh, they documented some serious like uh, problems from being involved in the clean up of that operation. Well, I mean, they just didn't uh, have the equipment to clean it up, uh, so that that was the problem. Yeah, uh, well, was and, uh, would you I not say there was a, a similar a solution? A solution. The cheap solution was to just have correct set as opposed to have booms and you know lots of other. Sort of uh, ways of dealing with it, uh, but they're expensive, and you have to have a, uh, people ready to to go. You have to employ people ready to go. So, so what we've got basically is a toxic sludge then basically sitting on the on the uh, 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 on the seabed in a in in a crevice, and it's filling up with this junk, and it's it's like creating a dead zone. From look, you I, you, I hate to be bloody sensationalizing like but more the more and more I look into this topic the more it seems that like the Gulf of Mexico is now a no-go area for life basically it's not conducive for life uh, would they would that agree with what you've been hearing Sean yeah I mean basically so um, all right anyway just a little sound check there Jimmy uh, in terms of my sound, uh, there is uh, certainly a slight loudness in the music uh, from my end. Uh, can you hear it? No, it's fine. It's fine. We'll put... oh, okay. No, well. the, we, we have our own Dr. Rock. He, he does a show here on Thursday evenings, and uh, it's a fantastic show. And uh, he's always like um, broadcasting from obscure locations such as festivals and uh, events and stuff. So, it's <laughs> so uh, I'd imagine like most uh, regular listeners, listeners to PIR won't mind concert sounds. Um, but yeah. I'm not sure how they're going to feel about Santa Claus coming in at 6 o'clock though. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got Father Christmas I, uh, I hope he doesn't crash into the building as I well. I can't uh, believe. Just the, uh, put the climb wash on it. What's he doing? Is he, is he not, should he not be at the North Pole packing presents? I don't know. He's, he's, he's popped over to Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> For a few pints of the black stuff, is it? Yeah, I think, I think uh, the powers that be have strategically plas uh, planted Limerick's 
only Christmas tree uh, <laughs> right in my flat. So, woe is me. But uh, okay, so we've got uh, we've got uh, she's ready to come in uh, in about two minutes. Um, so we have uh, yeah, I mean basically we've, we're going to be doing this. Uh, we've got Herve Covoir who'll be in hour three. Um, he'll be talking about Dana Dunsford, the uh, nuclear proctologist. Uh, you know what's happened, and you know his kind of take on things. He's he's not kind of into what Dana's got to say. Uh, but on the other hand, you know we, we were talking about the implications. You know for all of us, uh, bloggers and uh, uh, journalists and what have you. I suppose just in general, it's the the whole idea of like I mean free speech. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, how do, we, how do we deliver free speech without getting nicked, basically, <laughs> well, <laughs> by the police and authorities? <laughs> well, look, how do we clean up our act so that we're not inviting um, sort of unwanted attention because of choice of bad words, you know? Um, I mean, surely there's got to be a way to deliver content which is not going to be delivered in an aggressive manner but like because uh, I mean the site here there's so much emphasis placed here on site on other radio shows about um, passive language and about um, our choice of words and how we present information and um, you know it's 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 a really important topic you know um, I mean like uh, at the end of the day Oh. oh, sorry, hang on a minute. I thought you had your sound sw switched off, Sean. I did as well, actually. Good um, God, I'm going to wring your neck one of the... Well, you're coming to Longford soon, are you? I'm just going to wring yeah, your... That's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have a point after, but I'm going to wring your neck first, all right? I'm going to wring my neck. Fair enough, people. See? That's how well we get on uh, behind the scenes. So, it's um... all right, okay, so I need to get... Oh, the oh. joys of live radio, but yeah, it is. It but is. we were talking about passive language there, I suppose, and um, I think calls out the protest and calls out to go to war. It, it's not the way to be dealing with important topics, I suppose, because. <laughs> yeah, I'll try it again. Sorry about that. Pete. What's happening? Is our guest trying to ring in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, okay. That's right. I'll do it. I've got it now. Hopefully it's all right. Yes. Hi, Maureen, are you in? Hello. Hello, Maureen. So this is yes. Maureen Daphne. How do, how do you pronounce your second name, dare I say? Daphne. Daphne. All right, okay. Yes. And um, now you obviously run the, uh, we've just been talking about uh, the BP Gulf oil spill just before the show, uh, before you mm -hmm. came in. Um, uh, we we're just sort of loosely talking about uh, the situation you found yourself in when you decided to take up the, the sort of uh, realms or the helm, if you like, of trying mm -hmm. to do some investigation into what might actually be happening. Um, uh, so basically, uh, well, is there uh, anything you'd like to sort of say in, in, uh, in an introduction to yourself to our viewers? Um, about what you're doing now and, and uh, what, how you want to go forward uh, with your uh, struggles, your, your activism. Yes. Real Coastal Warriors is the name of the Facebook page that I admin on. And it was born out of the oil spill at the time when knowing that the people in the South had just barely started to get back up on their feet after Katrina had hit and the disaster had impacted their lives greatly. Um, people in the South, they're quite content with a simple life and they were happy to go out and do their shrimping, their crabbing, their fishing. Technology, skills on Facebook, uh, social media, even computers to a degree um, is not their forte and they needed some help. And even when they would go to libraries or public places where they could access systems thinking because BP was um, putting television commercials and radio commercials on saying you could go to their Facebook page and ask any question you wanted, um, instead, they were being targets. And I realized early on that the information that was coming forward were what BP wanted the public to hear and see and not the truth. So we started to enable individuals that lived along the Gulf in every single state along the Gulf that was impacted by the spill. 
which in itself, that word bothers me. It was never a spill. It was always a disaster. It is the largest environmental disaster in the history of the United States, largest man-made disaster in the history of the United States. And what BP was doing was um, not greenwashing. They were doing that from a corporate stand in their endorsements of things like the Olympics and, and other projects that they had worked on. They're very good at buying projects in the school districts throughout the South, also in states like Alaska where they have a vested interest as well as companies globally and we watched as people would go to the page myself one of them to ask questions and instead we became targets targets of not only them taking personal information from individuals that were filing claims either um, for economic or for personal illness if they were in what they called the vessels of opportunity program these were fishermen who loved the Gulf so much that they were willing to go out and clean up BP's mess and in doing so put themselves at risk. They were told there was nothing to fear. They were told that the dispersants were as safe as Dawn dish soap and nothing could have been further from the truth. They were denied access to face masks and respirators. Um, they were washed down and hosed down with chemicals when they would come in from the Gulf just to remove the oil and the contamination that was on them. And in doing so, many now across the entire Gulf are very, very sick and they're dying. And BP's response to people that would go to the page was to take that medical information and use it against them publicly. They would use prior arrest. They would use the fact that someone um, across the South, which is a common practice, they use a bartering system for seafood. They use a bartering system in order to survive. And they would turn around and, and refer them to the IRS for prosecution and avoidance of taxes. Um, what I found was them pushing people to the brink of breaking, and I could not accept what was happening. So I became a voice for them, and we set those troops out on the ground. We called them our boots on the ground, and they put themselves at risk as well to walk through and photograph the dead sea life, the oil that was washing ashore, the chemical applications that were occurring at night, either in boats on the Gulf, overhead um, with airplanes and aerial spraying, right over their homes. Um, it, it was it was like, uh, where is our government? That that was that was the most blatant, I think, and shocking thing is where was our government? Because BP was controlling the entire situation. BP utilized our U.S. Coast Guard for their own private police. Um, those officers themselves would deny not only the media up to and including major media outlets. CNN was denied access. CBS was told. BP's calling the shots and they videotaped that and put it on their broadcast. But week after week we watched more and more of the wildlife dying. We saw dolphins that were aborting um, prenatal uh, calves that were just babies, three months old um, at, at most in development that were being aborted um, and, and washing ashore and they would collect them and take them away so that no one would see that and they still have them down in a freezer down at the Dauphin uh, Sea Labs in Alabama um, where someone actually got in and was able to take pictures of them all wrapped up and just stacked up on shelves in a freezer um, for diagnostic purposes and what happened as an end result of our outcry for the sea life is the U.S. government ended up putting a gag order in place not allowing researchers involved in the recovery effort of the sea life to discuss it so that immediately took whatever voice we had for those animals um, and for that sea life and removed it from a scientific standpoint. But part of the horror as well was watching as BP slowly um, decided that they were going to allocate funding for so-called scientific research. And what they did is they bought that research. They contorted the research so that it would work in their favor. At the same time, when we were fighting them for the truth, they were saying that we were wrong, that they were going to um, take action against us for the things that we were saying. And the ironic part of it all is that now that the Department of Justice has allocated their fine to be $20.8 billion, which is the largest fine that any governmental agency has ever placed upon a corporation, um, it is pennies on the dollar compared to what they would have paid for now as the truth does come out and it proves that we were right all along that not just hundreds of thousands but trillions of wildlife died as a result of BP. And if you were to take those trillions and take the, the dollar value per as under the Clean Water Act and total it up, it would have been 10 times the amount 
that BP was fined. We now have other things that are coming to light about health studies and um, uh, uh, the dolphins themselves. Only 20% of the dolphins now in the Gulf can deliver to full term. So it won't be long within the next, I would say, four, three to four years before there won't be any dolphins left in the Gulf. That doesn't include the impact on whales. And, and one of the things that I've constantly said is their exposure rate was the human exposure rate. And dolphins and whales are mammals. People are mammals. What we are seeing happen now in the sea life, in the permanent alteration of DNA, is going to happen and is happening in the people. Wow. So it, it's, is it's there, a there real many tragedy. studies for, for the connection between DNA, do you mind me asking? Uh, yes, there have been. And, and where it starts is at the base and core of actual life in the Gulf. It's the plankton. And it's kind of the little fish, big fish theory. It, it, if the plankton are contaminated and they're eaten by something that eats that and eats that, eventually it all ends up into the DNA of the final person, which in some cases are human beings. And to compensate for that, even when they did studies, they, BP wanted people to believe that somehow or another there are professional sniffers that could smell seafood and know if it was contaminated, which is ludicrous. And that is the concept and theory that they put forward, that that was their science, that sniffers would tell people it was okay. And then when some independent researchers decided to actually test the seafood, the levels were way over the allocated amounts allowed by the FDA and food sources. So the response to that was the FDA raised the allowable levels in the food sources. So it's always been that the government has always been compromising the integrity of the people that they represent in lieu of the corporation that seems to have gotten away with literal murder. No, no, absolutely. That's, uh, that's, that's quite stunning, actually. Um, the, the, the other point, I mean, you know, we've got so many different subjects we can talk about here with this, and you're obviously um, somebody who, who uh, gets a very big overview of what's going on, you know, with all the mm -hmm. people that connect to you, the health, uh, the uh, environmentalists and health professionals. Um, so, so basically, uh, Going back a little bit further, when BP was doing its job, uh, we've discussed uh, in Fukushima and in a, a, an oil project in Ireland as well, a small, a small town, where they used um, sort of G4S and uh, or similar mm -hmm. uh, uh, organizations where the Ogilvy and Mather uh, and various other sort of PR organizations were involved. Um, to manage the news and to uh, create the tourist trade uh, advertising. We see that in Japan, we see it in America. Um, so, and it's, it seems to be a, a similar way that they deal with, uh, you know, sort of a, or should we say, a, 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 it's a, they, they have a, a sort of a, a, a pretty constant sort of uh, definition of how they're going to deal with a, a local community that's suffered from. Uh, sort of high contamination from an industrial accident, you know. Yes. Uh, and and sort of kind of my take from the Japanese side of it, which I was looking into all the details, and very much like you have as as a kind of a, a Facebook blogger kind of person, um, you have a, an overview. Uh, what what's your take? What was your take on BP and the security companies and surveillance and uh, and uh, pressures on people and things of this nature? Um, do you mind me asking? There are two words that summarize it. One, corruption. Two, collusion. Ogilvy and Mather was responsible for BP's Facebook page, the same page that individuals who were hired um, and, and were there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we learned later through an investigation with the Government Accountability Project that these individuals were set up in time zones so that 24-7 coverage would always be there on the page. These people harassed, demeaned, demoralized, and even mocked individuals who, who died. And to know that there are public relations companies that are so tightly woven to the entire, not just situation, but the entire country, even what they want to portray the BP disaster to other nations is beyond my scope of reason. They have way too much control. I don't know how they got it. I don't know how to take it away except in the ways that we did which was to go after them through reporters like Dar Jamal, through the law firm of um, uh, Papantonio in Florida, Mike Papantonio, and to go directly at the heart of what they were utilizing, and that is their platform was, was Facebook. And we found out that 
they had their own BP representatives that had access to Facebook records that could um, suspend our accounts without even having violated a rule. We had people that were suspended for 60 days for, for saying the word doily. And, and it never made sense to me. But what they were doing is they would use anything that they could find in order to eliminate that voice. So systematically across the board, if you came to the page, in all likelihood, you could count on at least a 30-day suspension or the threat of permanent removal from Facebook. And it is against Facebook's own policies to have multiple accounts. Yet these individuals not only had multiple accounts but identities and would even assume the identities of people who were activists so that they could turn around and, and misrepresent that person, that individual, and eventually it would lead to very ludicrous, at, at best, situations that, um, to me, were, were libelous. Um, the individuals that were involved were removed from Facebook as a result of our effort. We know who they are. We know where they live. Um, we never pursued taking further action against them because everything that you do costs money. BP has all the money in the world. We are just a group of volunteers that are just fighting for the truth. But what we were able to accomplish was that BP had to rewrite the rules of their Facebook page. They had to clarify what the conditions were that people could and could not say. And dissension um, and, and anger for the largest disaster in the history of the United States was no longer one of them. And today, BP's Facebook page, you can go there and you will see people that are now allowed to say, what you did was so horrible. What you did to my life was so horrible. And they don't have to fear retribution anymore. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, um, we were actually talking about Charles Williams Diggs' uh, interview that we did uh, mm -hmm. concerning uh, COP21, that they're trying to block independent uh, uh, journalists going in there. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so basically, uh, we're having that discussion, but uh, we were doing a Google. We noticed that Google search won't allow you to find that particular uh, post. Uh, on our WordPress site, they've uh, put somebody's put a block on the link. Well, so. what they do that commonly. What happens yeah. is, is yeah. BP pays Google. Um, they pay Wikipedia. They actually have people that are on Wikipedia changing the history and the That's outcome yeah. of the actual content, even right down to what corrects it is. And what's I, what's actually certifiable is one of the individuals that are making those claims and those changes, at least Wikipedia has a, a trail you can follow, That's is right. one of the trolls that was on BP's page. <laughs> so the circle it, it continues and, and they find different avenues to do that. But advertising dollars paid by BP to Google to diminish um, the search result and they even have it right down to the science that they can tell what browser you're using. They can tell what area that you're coming in from so that they can alter it even more so. Sure. Is that right? No. Do they have the right to do it? Absolutely. Um, is there something that we can do about it? Not really. Well, except to have well, I think, right on Tor, I think uh, Tor browser is a good start, though. Maybe more mm -hmm. people should use it. You know. Um, I'd, have, yes. I'd have to disagree with you there, Sean. Um, it, it, <laughs> uh, no, no. Just uh, while we're on this topic of the uh, of, of the Tor browser, sorry guys, I'm just jumping in here. Like, but mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, let's see. Uh, um, Documents published by Vice News, Motherboard, and further reporting by Wired News suggest that teams of researchers from Carnegie Mellon University who cancelled their scheduled 2015 Black Hat talk identified Thor hidden servers and, um, and visitors and turned that data over to FBI. So, um, how safe is Thor? I, I don't know if I should, if I would like to advise anybody to trust even Thor these days. So, just good point, good point. If there is a will, there is a way, and you have to remember, and I've said this since the start, BP runs governments, not just in the United States, where they receive every non-bid, non-competitive contract for our Department of Defense fuel contracts, but straight over to Iraq, where a war enables them now to have the exclusive drilling rights to, to Iraqi oil. I mean, we have, we have a, a corporation that is now over the government's ability to be able to stop or control them. And we have laws that have been put in place through political contributions to candidates that allow them to even write off everything of the 20.8 except for $6.5 billion in tax write-offs, which means to add insult to injury, the American taxpayer is now going to foot the bill on top of the environmental, economical, and ecological disaster that we're already paying for and will for the rest of our lives and generations to come. 
It's not going to go away. And what needs to happen is the laws need to change. And governments need to be able to be accountable to the people first and not big oil. And this is not just, I mean, if you look at Alaska right now, Alaska saying that if we don't subsidize big oil and they pull out, we can't survive as a state. So let's give them everything that they want so we can keep them here. This is America. Uh, if, if you don't mind me jumping in here, Maureen, um, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, what you were saying there uh, concerning the lack of willingness in the governments to actually affect any real change and so it seems to me like I, my cursory research of how the whole system works and everything is that the governments don't really work for the people and um, at the end of the day the only thing that's going to save the people is to is for the people themselves to stand up and accept their own sovereignty and um, and 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 take responsibility to um, to to affect change, and it may come down to holding people uh, who are assuming uh, so-called uh, positions of authority for them to be held liable in their own personal uh, under their own full commercial liability. Because like it's men and women that do this damage to the earth. It's men and women that are responsible for. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, a lot of the a lot of the pollution problems, a lot of the problems that we're seeing on there. So, is it not more appropriate that we, instead of trying to hold the companies themselves liable, but hold the men and the women who are running and and making the things work? Because the company can't do anything itself. It takes men and women to make the mach the, ma the machination work. Do you, do, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. And one thing that I have done with the platform that I have. And I'm blessed with so many followers. I have um, almost 27,000 members and over 68,000 pages that follow. And it, everything that coincides, whether it be pipelines or fracking or drilling in and fracking ocean floors, um, the acidity issues that are in the ocean right now, pollution, coal, carbon, everything that we're going to the conference in Paris for is a global issue and using that platform not only to continue to expose BP for the truth but also to teach an entire generation about how to fight and what is happening and giving them the tools to empower themselves and that was evident um, it's evident now and it was evident as well in Canada there are individuals who have been with real coastal warriors um, they are boots on the ground in Canada and they decided to run for office and as a result of them running votes were taken away from Stephen Harper and now Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister of Canada and as of last week he said that there will be no more oil tankers allowed on the northwest side of Canada that essentially without action shuts down the Northern Gateway Pipeline so because citizens decided to run in Canada the Keystone XL pipeline is now dead, the Northern Gateway is now dead, and those tar sands will not flow unless they find an alternative route. And we will keep watching and we will keep informing and people will keep fighting. In New Jersey, there were gentlemen that ran in New Jersey that did not win but were successful in a being able to establish a platform and again educate the public. And they did receive good support. Um, not enough to win, but sometimes even in loss, you win when you can affect change. If you can enlighten and change one individual to see the truth, then you've accomplished a lot. And right now, that's the situation in Louisiana. We have uh, U.S. Senator David Vitter, who makes no secret about his love for oil or his donations he's received, and a gentleman that we have endorsed by the name of John Bell Edwards, who in all essence, by everything that we see in the polls, will be the first Democratic governor of the state of Louisiana. The people of Louisiana under Bobby Jindal have been denied health care. He has been obstinate and against um, what they call Obamacare um, in the United States and as a result of that many of the people that are sick can't even get coverage or help. So this is a first step in major change in the United States of breaking the control that they have and people standing up and realizing that there are more of us that vote then there are those that serve. And we have to keep in mind that if they're not going to serve you, they don't belong in office. And that is a mentality that we teach. We expose what they do. We expose what they take. We follow and monitor and publicize 
their oil meetings that they have, whether it be um, in Africa on the continent there or in Australia where they're fighting right now to stop BP from drilling the Great Australian Bight which is insanity, one of the last harbors and sanctions of whale sanctuaries um, in that entire nation, and they want to put BP of all people in there. If we say, if we, if we judge BP by the Gulf is one thing, we have to judge BP as a corporation since 1979 that has been entangled in Iraq, has had refineries blow up and killed people in Texas. I mean, their Alaska pipeline exploded and killed wildlife there. Um, this company is not competent nor qualified to be an oil company. And at one point or another, we have to say, when is enough too much? We are there. And I think that that's becoming evident not only in their share price, which the bottom line is profits, profits lead to greed, and their shareholders are the ones that um, ultimately get angry. And it's unfortunate for them that money is more important than life or more sacred than life, but in our opinion, people come first. Well said. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, Summing up what you just said there, I mean, you're, in reality, we're, what we're really saying is that the social media and alternative media that have been covering these topics and getting the word out to people you know, mm -hmm. uh, has basically, you know, meant that we're actually getting successes, um, and it's, uh, it's it's not all a one-way stream for the corporations. So um, it's you know, I, I a big heads up to to your work because um, it certainly helped uh, a lot of people um, sort of understand what's actually happening in in uh, sort of that area with mm -hmm. the, uh, with the contamination and uh, health effects um, so uh, well uh, just taking it a little bit further I mean some of the people you've met um, uh, on a personal kind of level I mean uh, obviously you've met people they've made claims and you know how how did you receive them? How did you check them out? Um, how did you confirm that they're genuine people? Um, could, could you give us a bit of feedback about that with the, on the activist side of it? Yeah, I get a lot of messages from individuals that filed claims or people that were sick or people that were just afraid. Um, what they went through, especially those that were right in the thick of things, the closer you were to the shore, um, the more your, your health and, and the situation was risky. Um, a lot of them would come to me and say, I just got blood work done and I have super high levels of benzene in my blood and I'm bleeding when I urinate or, or um, I'm, I'm vomiting blood. Um, I need help and nobody will help me. Um, when someone sends you their medical records, it's pretty much a confirmation. It's not what BP wants to see or hear. So I would, I would um, take the, the personal sections and I would block them out and post them so that people could see what people were going through. On claims, very few claims, I think it's like 6.8% current, have ever been paid to individuals. BP is still dragging its feet on that and only as of two weeks ago decided to drop a claim that basically everybody that filed the claim was a crook, um, was corrupt and was trying to, to steal from poor, poor BP. And we knew that that was ridiculous from the start, but imagine that you are a fisherman and you can no longer fish. Imagine when you go out to drop your shrimp nets and nothing comes back. Um, imagine that everything that your father had taught you, whose father had taught him, whose father before him had learned, was gone. And you have a son who was supposed to assume and continue the family business and provide the seafood that feeds a nation, and it's gone. And then all of a sudden you have someone like BP telling you, you're a crook. You're corrupt. You didn't earn this money. You don't deserve anything. It was insult to injury in such a dramatic fashion that these individuals had nowhere else to go. That was the purpose of the page, was to give them a voice, to give them somewhere where they could turn, and we would make referrals. And in that same light, there's a lot of good people in the world. Many people came forward, bands, um, companies that had uh, different products that they wanted to donate, and we helped to facilitate that need by putting them through local organizations and churches that were actually helping the individuals because there was no governmental assistance. They got nothing. The food uh, banks ended up going broke. That They ran out of food because so many people didn't have food to eat. When your dinner comes from the Gulf and the Gulf is suddenly a pool of oil and corrects it, um, your food is gone. Right. So, uh, I mean, basic, basically then when we're sort of looking at this situation, um, would you say that uh, that in terms of the science, 
trying to get the science across to people. You know, uh, you have the data, and uh, are there universities helping out? Is there any epidemiologists trying to uh, get data, and uh, is the data being hidden? Um, could you give us a little bit of a, a sort of a general idea of what what the science behind mm -hmm. all this is? Because you obviously have the testimonies. And, yes. uh, and medical notes uh, as evidence, but mm -hmm. but what's been done to sort of pull it all together and come up with some concrete figures in a maybe even a peer-reviewed article? There are there are two sides to the ecological side of things. There are is research that's going on um, that there's one side that's white and there's one side that's black, and you can tell the difference between the two by which one is funded by DP. We have researchers like Samantha Joy, who's out of Georgia um, University, and she is doing incredible things and she's not afraid to tell the truth. There are um, on the ground in the marshlands studying even the smallest creatures impacted the, the, the bugs um, and, and the tiniest little things in the soil um, is Linda Bowie uh, Hooper who is out there every day and doing research. Again, not funded by PP, not afraid to tell the truth. The majority of people who are funded by PP are coming across and saying glorious and wonderful things about how the Gulf is rebounding and life is teeming and everything is wonderful. It doesn't take much to see that difference and to know that the difference is so stark and so startling. And part of what needs to happen and, and part of our goal for the future that we've been fighting for is an end to corporate sponsored research. The scientists themselves are angry. Um, the scientific communities are fighting as well within their own organizations to say no more. The same way that um, museums and, and individuals who are fighting to stop corporate oil sponsorship of, of like the Tate in, in, in the UK, um, they're buying up everything that they want people to see and hear and it has to stop. From a human side of things, um, there is very little help that is available. There are a couple of doctors locally um, that have done work and are helping people, um, but there are the doctors that people go to, they're not versed in how to check for chemical toxicity in people. Um, this is something that the CDC should have come in, should have been assisting on. They were certainly doing air studies and didn't publicize any of that data um, to say exactly how bad what people were even breathing in was impacting them. And the people are the forgotten ones here, not only just in the claims, like I said, and, and being accused of being crooks just solely because they exist, but also in the fact that they can't get health care. And part of our goal now is to work to get clinics set up across the Gulf so that we can start treating people. Can you stop? I mean, there are, are known and suspect known carcinogens. Most of them are components of oil. When BP added the corrects that they took one singular um, one singular source, a resource, a natural resource, and broke it into 17 chemical components that make up oil itself. Then throw on top of that the components that are within Corexit, and it's just it's a toxic soup. And, and they let not only people that live there go out and clean up without proper protections, um, but they also let tourists come down. They, they paid tourists to come down and gave them beach towels and discount rates at hotels to lay in BP's oil. And what they would do is at night when the hotels, people were sleeping in the hotels, is they would go along the beach and they'd throw some more sand over the top of it. And it didn't stop it from being in there. And now the epidemic that is impacting the Gulf is um, Vibrio, flesh-eating virus, is rampant. And it has been proven um, out of Auburn University that it's tied to BP's tar balls, that it's the tar balls that they have picked up and that they have diagnosed are full of it. And people are dying. And it's frightening to watch that no one in governmental authority, whether it be um, our U.S. health authorities or the, the Centers for Disease Control that are responsible for collecting data on epidemics, are doing a thing. So that's quite interesting. So I mean, we, we have the same thing in Japan with the uh, mm -hmm. Fukushima victims uh, where the studies aren't being done. Uh, it took a, a university just to come up and put, pull the data that was there. Um, and put it into a peer-reviewed article to discover that, you know, children in Fukushima have a, a, a very high rates of uh, thyroid cancer. You know, mm -hmm. people who right. 
would take you know sort of doing this could could say it but uh, but there was a very first peer reviewed article study that that basically was done by a university and all he did was count the data that was just sitting there for four years the the actual japanese thyroid uh, uh, association uh, hadn't touched that uh, any subject like that so it's interesting unfortunately i think it gets to a point and this is the point mentally where i'm at that it's going to take a country outside of the US that perhaps has an NGO that can bring forward charges for human rights violations against individuals both in Japan and in the US when these situations occur because the rights of individuals within their own countries are non-existent. Sure. Well, I mean, it's the UN it was obviously the obvious choice. Uh, UN uh, Human Rights Commission uh, probably Correct. is a good start, you know, for because you, you're supposed to be able to have a, 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 a have the right to have a healthy home and environment and uh, lifestyle, and the right to have the government that you elect or, or put in service to protect the people, protect the people, and well, instead they protect the corporations or in this case TAPCO with with Fukushima, yeah, and it gets to a point where. The human rights side of things is going to become a bigger issue because it's not just happening here. And it has to come to a point where governments are responsible and held accountable for the citizens that have been injured. And it's not just taking $20 million as, as Obama did and saying we're going to put it in an account and, and in his words, we're going to kick some ass. Um, he didn't kick anybody's ass and he hasn't helped anyone across the Gulf with that kind of mentality. We see him do... Um, specific things where he'll shut down and, and, and say that the Keystone Pipeline isn't going to move forward, but then he'll do things that make absolutely no sense in approval of other projects. The fact that BP has no bid contract status still to this day for our Department of Defense um, fuel contracts is disturbing. Why are we doing business with them as a nation? Why are we giving them tax write-offs? You are not looking out for the people, and it's time that somehow, and if it's through the UN, then God bless them because people need help. Not just here, but all across the the entire globe. Sure. So it certainly seems that oil is a is a an, a strange currency that people use. I believe uh, articles out recently about ISIS selling uh, one million or two million dollars of oil a day, uh, and that's a, a a quarter of the price. Uh, um, of of the oil on the market, uh, and mm -hmm. they seem to be getting ready uh, buyers from Europe and uh, various other countries, so um, and areas. So that's uh, that that says a lot, really, doesn't it? They operate as a shadow government, and anything that operates in the shadows is going to be wrought with corruption and criminals, and that's basically what this corporation stands for, in my personal opinion. Wow. I, I think I think this has come a very good spot <laughs> to finish mm. the interview. Uh, that was an amazing f finale. Um, look, thank you so much for uh, coming, uh, uh, Maureen. Uh, thank you for giving the voice to the people in the Gulf as well and, and letting people know that the human crisis is just beginning. It atypically takes between years 6 and 10 um, from exposure for cancers to become rampant. So we are approaching the six-year point come April. So things are going to dramatically change. And for BP, unfortunately, again, um, there is no denying the truth. It will become evident in the human victims that, once again, beyond the 11 men who died that day, um, will again become victims to BP's disaster. Well, I mean, we've got Scott Porter, uh, Tricia Springstead, uh, and maybe one or two other people lined up to talk to us about various aspects of the uh, BP Gulf oil spill, uh, health effects, environmental effects, uh, and uh, is the uh, situation ongoing. Um, but but they're, what I would like... good people doing good things, very good things. Thank you for that uh, endorsement. And um, uh, But I certainly would like to get you back in at some point, because if you, you have this great overview um, of the situation and uh, uh, it'd certainly be nice for us to uh, pick each other's brains uh, and certainly for us to pick your brains certainly. Uh, uh, if, if that's okay uh, Absolutely. So that's great uh, Jimmy have you got anything left to say here this is uh, Jimmy Hagen my well, co-host I've just, just <laughs> spotted I didn't introduce at the start of the show uh -huh. sorry about that it's a bit rushed yeah it's okay we'll forgive you my young Pad Van Lerner but um, I, I'd like to. I'd like to thank Maureen. Uh, thanks very, very much. Uh, I know the the uh, disaster down there in the Gulf is a couple of years old now, but um, we have not forgotten, and um, and we'll be continuing to cover this story as it evolves because you know the, the, it's just frightening to think uh, what might be down the pipeline for the people living in around the vicinity of that 
toxic sludge. So look, we won't forget anyway, uh, that's for sure. It's important to look at these disasters like a book of a thousand pages. This is what I tell people, each page representing one year. We're about to, to read page six out of a thousand. We have a long way to go. Well, hopefully we'll put a stop to it by getting the information right. out as we've Thank you so time. much. God bless. God bless. Good night, Maureen. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Okay then, Sean. So, um, yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, it's it's quite it's it's sad, but we kind of we kind of knew it was going to end up here anyway at some stage. That sure. this disaster wasn't going away, and that we were going to be hearing more about it as dear. But like you know, it's 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 nicely out of the minds of uh, the general population of the globe. Like, but it affects not just people in the Gulf of Mexico because. Uh, we also have to take into consideration, even here on the coast of Ireland, the uh, the Gulf uh, Stream, which also it, it brings us warm water in uh, in winter times to keep our shores ice free and uh, and you know anything. Well, we have, anything, we have the Atlantic uh, eel as well, don't we? Well, which anything, is, uh, that, anything that's lurking. Well, anything, that, anything that anything that may be lurking around there in the Gulf is going to be sort of like working its way up here slowly but surely, you know. And that's not taking into consideration all the dumping that was done off the uh, Atlantic coast of Ireland there uh, with uh, nuclear pollutants from various different sources. Uh, so, um, yeah, that was... Uh, it was nice to hear Maureen there. Uh, a, 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 a good catch there, Sean. Fair play to you. Uh, she's, uh, she, I, I've been keep it, following her blog. I, I didn't really tie in. It was Maureen that was the, uh, the admin on the blog page, but she did a lot of posting. Uh, but she's just had such a wide variety. It's really useful uh, web page to to get all the the, the up to date information on what's going on. Um, there are a few other uh, similar Facebook pages around, but Maureen really has been uh, been sticking at it. Um, recommend you get over there. You know, press like. Well worth uh, getting her posts when they come up. I've done it. Um, I've and done uh, it. she's a uh, yeah. Sorry, go. On. Yeah, I've done this. Yeah, I've got my like in there. I want to follow that page, so um, should be interesting. Yeah, and we're going to put all the links on our European News WordPress.com site. We're going to put the links European there. News so Weekly, Facebook. European News Weekly, that WordPress.com site. Exactly. Sorry, exactly. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and we're going to put her Twitter.com uh, account, which is always a handy thing to have. Um, and uh, basically, you can go and check her out um, if you haven't already got the link. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was great. And I say, the people we've got coming up who are also going to be discussing this. Uh, it's going to be really mind blowing. Um, you know, you're going to hit, hear things, uh, and you know, unfortunately, we're going to have some really horrible pictures on our European News Weekly WordPress.com website. Um, but uh, you know, we're, we're going to put some evidence, documented evidence, up there, and uh, link for the uh, the, the testimonies and uh, audio testimonies and transcripts uh, of people uh, who live in that area and what's happening to them. So you know. 